Hey guys, jumping right into it because this is a very long video. This is how I have my wig cap on a 25 inch mannequin. Extremely tight. As you can see, there's no extra for me to pull. There used to be fabric on it, but I cut it because the stitches were getting caught in it. The reason that it's a 25 inch mannequin is because I have a 24 inch head and I have a lot of hair. Therefore, and that's the center of course, you wanna match your, or you wanna put it on the uh, cap like that. And then you're gonna measure out where the frontal goes. So I'm gonna measure out the center of the frontal and leave about that much. Like you wanna be able to see the black part just at the very hairline of the frontal. As you can see, there's like a tiny bit of black right at the frontal. And you can see it there when I part the hair. That protective band there is going to match up. Do you see that spot that has no protective band right there? That's gonna go in front of the cap. So you're gonna bring that protective band to right there. So you'll see me do that here. And then you see that part with no protective band in front of it. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to pin that down. As you can see with both sides done, it's lifted a bit in the front, which is what I want because then I'll add an elastic band, which I will be doing a video on. The elastic band will make the frontal stay down but it will cover your sideburns. So you could see how it's lifted. You could see how much the black is shown. And then you could see that there's some ridging here. However, we're just gonna sew over that because we wanna be able to hide our sideburns. So I'm going to thread a long curved needle. This is how I thread. I put the one side through, I put the other side straight, and then I just knot the end. I did not go to any school for wig making or any classes, but I've been doing it for six years now, and um, I really enjoy it. I did go to school for hairstyling. Obviously, we've talked about this before. If you're new to my channel, though, I went to school for hairstyling, but not for wig making. I've never been to any classes, um, but I've watched hundreds of hours on YouTube. So I started making my own. So then I have one. Now I'm just going to take part of the frontal. I had a struggle with this one, but I just want you guys to see. Take part of the frontal, take part of the cap, and then pull through. You never wanna go, you never want to sew on the elastic bands that are in between the middle. I'll put a photo up of what I'm talking about. I've colored red the part that you never want to sew over. Because that is what allows your wig to stretch. So any of the actual elastic of the wig, I skip over it. Any part that has that, uh, that texture, like the one in front of my index finger. Now how I sew, I'm going to do a demonstration here in one moment, but I put the needle in and then the extra that is have that hasn't been in the wig yet goes on the opposite side of the needle. So you'll see here in a couple moments, I wanted to skim through this because I didn't think that you guys could see sufficiently. 
So I'm going to show how I do it in just a couple moments here. So this is where I show you how to do it. You put the hook needle in. You have the part that's already in your wig on one side and you have the part that is right there, that leftover from not being in the wig. You're gonna put that on the opposite side of the needle. That way the needle is in between the two excess pieces of thread. So the reason you do that is because it gives a very anchored stitch, as you could see. Pulling on it, it didn't even move. Um, so once again, put it in, put the extra over, pull through. It's very simple and it just gives an extra added security to your wig. I'm not sure what stitch this is called. I want to say it's called an anchor stitch, I, but I'm, I don't think it is because that's, I think, where you wrap it around. Anyway, whatever. So just continuing to stitch... And then I will have to start with another needle because I did go, I didn't have enough thread for this, but that's quite all right. So right here, I show you the part you never want to go on. See that line there? You never want to sew on those. You want to go over it. Because like I said, that is the elastic of your wig.
when I get to the end, I just cut it and then knot it. So you will have this extra cap now under the frontal. You are going to cut that away. I always leave it about half an inch to an inch away from the actual um, stitching. So as you can see, the wig cap comes down to the back of my neck in the back. And in the front, it covers my sideburns. Even with my massive bun on my head, it still fits me perfectly because I've stretched it on the mannequin. So this is your lace. As you can see, there's a bit in front of the hairline here is where you're going to cut. You're gonna cut about a quarter of an inch. So I have an inch tattoo on my finger here so I can measure stuff. <laughs> and you're going to do about a quarter of this. For real though, um, one of the main reasons I have this tattoo is because whenever I'd be doing people's hair, they'd, be, they'd say, oh, take an inch off. And they don't realize how much an inch truly is. Uh, so when you tell them, you know, this is an inch, right? Like, you sure you want this much off? That's why, uh, that's why I have that. Can't say I haven't used it in other ways, though. So this is how your lace is going to look like once it's cut off. And then, as you can see, this is how it looks like when it is back on my head. Once you pull everything forward, it still covers the sideburns. And it's looking very nice. You want to have that flap kind of there. Now I'm going to, once again, stretch this over the 25 inch mannequin. I pull every inch of it as far as it can go. So the top I pull and then I pull the two sides and then I put two in the nape of the neck. So this is what your bundle will look like when you get it. It's, um, of course, that's not how it'll look every time, but you want to take extra care that the plastic and the rubber doesn't, like the elastic and the plastic and everything doesn't go everywhere because if you have kids or if you have animals, you don't want them to get in contact with that and swallow it and harm them. So most definitely make sure that you take care of that. I'm just unraveling it. And as I'm unraveling it, I'm just um, combing my fingers through it. I just want to ensure that the tangles, because when it's been raveled like this and it's been processed and everything, unless you're getting raw hair, virgin hair is always processed. So anyway, I'm not going to sew on these parts, but I'm going to do a straight line across and then I'll start to curve it under. You'll see what I mean in a moment here, kind of like that. I know that's hella messy, sorry, I just wanted to uh, 
try to help. <laughs> so I'm going to pin those down and then I'm going to sew. I don't put a knot or anything at the beginning. I just sew a couple times over the one spot to secure the end. So it's um honestly very simple. I was very, ex like I was so intimidated the first time I did a wig and I had never hand sewn in my life before. So the first wig that I sewn was the first item that I sew, like I, I've sewn, period. Um, I really like sewing my own wigs because I can control the density from the... For, from this one, you'll see how it's kind of, um, you kind of do it as you go, but I used a 13 by 6 blonde uh, 613 frontal, and I had not as much cap left, so I started spacing them out about a half an inch. The wefts, I started spacing them about half an inch, and then I got about halfway and I realized, shit, I have a lot of hair and not a lot of room. So I started doing them directly over each other, which ended up being fine. Like, it doesn't matter, honestly. Um, as long as you don't have cap showing when the hair is all down, there's not really any problem with it. So now when you flip it over, very simple. You just tack down that corner nice and good. You make sure you get pretty much every inch of the corner that's being flipped. And then you continue on back the other way. I wanted to mention as well, you do not have to go through your wefts. You do not have to go around your wefts. You could do either one. I prefer to go through my wefts. People say that that causes shedding. I don't have a lot of issues with shedding when I do it. Um, if you find that you make a wig and you're having a lot of issues with shedding, I recommend going through and either gluing your wefts or sealing your wefts. Um, but I never have that issue. I don't seal my wefts really I do because it's. I don't want to seal them for review purposes so I could get the true origin of how the hair is. Although I've been using the same kind of hair for a while now. Um, cause I really like it, the new star hair. But anyway, that's besides the point. I have reviews on that on my channel if you want. So I continue to curve this as it kind of helps to lay flat on the head. And I, I, I wanna mention this as well too. I'm not someone who is super interested in first of all I have a lot of hair and I don't get it cornrowed or anything so it's really hard for me to get it completely flat I am not interested in a completely flat install of a wig I find of course it's, it's great if you are that's excellent but I find no one no one's hair looks as flat as at least mine doesn't 
um, as flat as some people wear their wigs. Gorgeous looks and gorgeous styles. I just like volume in my hair. Um, I like to have like I don't know like just big volume and having a lot of wefts in your hair it's harder to get flat and because I'm not picky about it I don't really care you know what I mean like if it was something that I was really picky about I would take extra precaution to make sure that there's absolutely no lumps or anything like that but that's not something that matters to me so Anyway, I I hope that makes sense. That's the reason I'm not super worried about it being a little bit, not lumpy, but more voluminous. I hope, like, I know that that doesn't make sense. I'm just sitting here thinking of what I'm saying, but I can't explain it any other way. (laughs) So anyway, uh, just going back and forth with these wefts, ensuring that they're a little bit curved because it does help with having it be flatter.
So you can see as I've gotten up here, I do leave a little bit in between the wefts and the frontal. That is because when everything is said and done, when I get all the way to the top, I'm gonna add one more weft of hair from nape of the neck all the way around to the other nape of the neck, the other side of the nape of the neck uh, to connect the wefts and the frontal. You'll see that at the very end of the video. So I just make sure that there's a little bit remaining between the wefts and the frontal, but not a lot because you don't want any, if your hair is black, it's a bit more forgiving. But of course, this hair is most definitely not black. So I want to make sure there's no gaps, so to speak. So when you get up to the top, there's going to be a little gap like this where there's no frontal and no wefts and you want to make it look like this. You want to take one weft and drape it all the way across that small gap to connect the wefts to the frontal. And then you have your wig, it's done. I'm gonna do a video on how I color this, color, um, style it, elastic band, all that. But I hope you guys enjoyed, bye.